This is Chris, the Idaho Painter here on Home Improvement How To's. Today, we're gonna to be showing you how to set up the Titan HEA tip system. And that's the Titan HEA tip, their Titan HEA gauge. And we're gonna be using the RX Pro gun and we're gonna be setting it up on a Titan 440, which doesn't have a pressure gauge, so you don't know the pressure you're running at. So this gauge is very important. And what are, the, what are these tips all about, John? These tips are all about less overspray, which means less work for you in the long run. And they do save you money too. How do they save you money? So they save you money by, well, I mean, one, you're operating at a thousand PSI, so the tips last twice as long. Uh, the other thing too is that's less work for your pump to do, which means more time between having to repack or do the regular maintenance on your pump. Yep, and this system sets up really easy. We're gonna show you how to set it up, where to put your gauge. We're even gonna be running a gauge on the pump, which isn't what you're supposed to be doing, but we're gonna run one on the pump, one on the gun, so you can see the pressure drop as we add multiple hoses. We're gonna start with 50 feet of hose, then run 100 feet, then 150 feet, so you're gonna see that. So here we go, we're gonna set it up, and it's a really fast and easy process, a simple way to save you a whole bunch of money and save you the trouble of overspray. All you need is a few basic tools. John's got a wrench, a crescent wrench, and um, and we got, this is all brand new equipment, so we're gonna set it up. I'm gonna give you some close-up views. I'll just have John hooking the hoses up and stuff. I'm gonna grab the camera so you can get down here and see what the heck is going on and um, get a close-up look of these gauges. The gauges are designed exactly for the HEA tip. They have an HEA right here, a green, um, like a safety zone. Like a safety zone. The zone where you're this supposed to be running the tip. HEA zone. The HEA zone. That's what, and I don't know if you can see it there, but we'll get close down here. So here we go. Let's set this thing up. Start. So we've got our brand new Titan 440 here. First thing we're going to do is we've got to take one of these gauges and we've got to put it um, first thing coming off of the pump and that'll give us our initial readout. That way you can see uh, what your pressure is at the pump and then we'll be able to see what our pressure for each length of uh, 50 foot hose that we're going to put on, how much we lose uh, per length of hose. So we will attach, and these are all pressure fitting so they just need to be attached no Teflon tape or anything that's needed and then we're just gonna take crescent wrench here and tighten we will take our length of hose here and attach that it's pretty simple it's uh, it's not rocket science it's just making sure you put the right components in the right sequence. We're going to take our second gauge here and we're going to put that in line on the hose. Make sure you get it on nice and tight so you don't start your day with a bunch of leaks. And then the gun is going to go direct to that. Now typically we would probably put a whip between this hose and the gauge and then the gauge it's important goes directly to the gun itself. So we'll attach this gun and the gauge directly to themselves. And there you have it. We are all set to go there. So we will take some product and load it up and start taking some readings on our gauge here. So we got this thing all hooked up now. We'll be hooking up, we don't have a whip. Um, typically we would hook up a yellow Swedish whip on, on here, in between here, and the whip gives you um, the ability to move the gun around. It's a lot more flexible, just the hose itself. It's not on, but just with this here, the, you can see the swivel, or the um, gauge, rotates around, doesn't get in the way. Um, probably wanna be careful not hitting this on a ladder. If this thing drops, hits a rock or something, might break the gauge. But we're gonna be testing it out right now and we're gonna come over here, spray some paint. You'll see how the tip sprays, and you'll see how this thing runs. So we're kind of messing around with this thing, watching the two gauges, and we, this gauge, um, right now we have them set just a little bit above the green. So I guess one of the questions is, while it's spraying and coming out, do you want it to be in the green? So you want it a thousand PSI as it's spraying, not just what the readout is on the gauge. So right now I have it set, it's just right at the very top of the green. When I start spraying, it drops to the about of the bottom of the green. So you want it to, it's interesting watching the two. When I'm spraying here, if this is set in the middle of the green in the HEA, 
if this when I'm spraying this will fall all the way out of the grain below so it's too low so it's interesting using both of these gauges to test this whole system out One thing I think they um, said about this, John, wasn't it? It throws out bigger droplets or something like that. Um, yeah, what they said is that it, it throws out bigger droplets, which are going to sink faster in the air and not float around quite as much. You can see how those edges are nice and feathered out and you don't have um, any fingering on them. Give, have John test this out, we'll get a close up view. You have any thoughts on the tip there, John? Um, it does seem, uh, you know, I think like Chris has mentioned, the, these aren't fine finished tips. These are just regular tips. So you don't want to confuse them with um, another competitor who might have a similar color tip. Uh, you can see um, it doesn't atomize the paint as much as a fine finished tip would, but it does help control it and give you that softer uh, kind of feather on your fan, which is kind of nice so that you're not getting that hard buildup on the edges like we see so often with blown out tips. So we got this system set up pretty fast. I mean, it only probably took us, I don't know, maybe five minutes to just hook these gauges up figure it out, figure out what we need to spray it at. Now we're gonna go hook up some more hose on this thing and see if there's any effect with adding more hose. And I think now all we gotta do, if we're gonna spray the same product now over and over, we were just taking mark you know, on our um, sprayer where that sprayer is set at. Yeah, it seems like once you can figure out with each set of hose what your variance is and what you need to set it at, that would save you from having to have a gauge up here that's getting covered with, with any spray or getting hit by a ladder or kind of just getting in the way and you would just have to have a gauge back there at the pump. Yep, let's go hook up some more hose, here we go. So we now we've just added another 50 feet of hose and we have noticed a difference between the two gauges now. I think, what, what did you figure out? How much we've dropped? We're, we're about 100 PSI lower from where the pump is to where the gun is here. So there definitely there's a difference. So if you add more hose, you're gonna have to adjust your pressure. So we're gonna take it over there. We'll spray it with this added. We've got 100 feet of hose now. We'll spray it, we'll see what it looks like. We haven't changed anything with the pressure. We're gonna see how much we gotta change it now. So John's gonna spray, we'll spray some right here with our 100 feet of hose. See how um, the reading of the gauge is with that extra 50 feet. And we may, we'll see how much if we gotta go back, even if we gotta go back to the sprayer and adjust it. So go ahead and hit that thing and see what's going on. Dropping about 100 PSI out. So it, it dropped about 100 PSI outside of the HEA range. You can also see we started getting some a little bit of fingering too. It wasn't feathered very good. So definitely we're gonna have to bump that pressure up and then we'll continue testing. Yeah, and that would drop us right to that 1,000 PSI range perfectly. So, um, so right there, it changed the spray pattern. Tip's working great now. Mm -hmm. how, much, um, how much did that raise, did I raise you? So right now, we're reading 1,500 PSI at the gauge with 100 feet of hose. That means when we're pulling the trigger, it drops right at perfectly about 1,000 PSI. There's a little bit of variance as the pump's running, but it stays pretty close to that 1,000 PSI. So with that, we went from uh, 50 feet to 100 feet and about how much PSI did we have to bump it up? Had to bump it up about two to 300 PSI. Two to 300 PSI for another 50 feet of hose. So there we have it. We've tested it with 100 feet of hose. We were gonna add another 50 feet of hose, but 
our local paint store didn't have any more hoses so we we're stuck with just testing it with 100 feet two sections but we know once we added another 50 feet on you know it dropped it, it um, we had to raise the pressure several hundred psi so a significant drop yeah so it probably is definitely a good idea try to have two of these gauges on hand um, probably after like chris said after you get in the a rhythm and you kind of know this is the amount of hose you're working with and these are the products you're working with you probably don't have to have one here on the the end of the gun because you'll know what you need to be set up there on the back um, but that would probably vary with product depending on how thick it is or or not i know we've been getting some questions um already from our live show and stuff and can can you use this tip with other guns so if you have other manufacturers of guns the threads on the guns themselves cells are typically standard threads and all you need is a Titan HA tip which works with the Titan guards in either guard so the tip and guard will scrape or will um, screw onto any other gun so yes you can use them with any other guns how long do the tips usually last John so the the tips are gonna last um, a, probably an hour well it, it doubles the life so there's a lot of variability with that because if you're using a cheaper paint or like a shooting a flat paint or a ceiling paint where it's a lot harder on the tips obviously that's gonna wear any tip out faster uh, but for most um, interior exterior latex products high quality products it sounds like you're gonna get in the neighborhood of 75 plus gallons uh, per uh, per tip and so that's about double what we would typically because we're typically using a tip for about 40 gallons at the most yeah 40. And so you're going to double that to 80 gallons and, and you may even push it past that and still get a decent fan depending on your product another question people may um have and uh and for us it was interesting because do you even need the gauge and so we got these tips a while ago without a gauge and we really liked them because it's amazing it, it really controlled the overspray really well doing fences but then it kind of got frustrating with us um we were spraying some paints getting some fingering and we didn't know what was going wrong and lo and behold it's um because we were we we had a titan 1140 and it told us the psi at the pump but that has is completely different than what's at the gun and we had no idea what we're running at the gun yeah. so it made it really nice right over there to be able to spray look while we're spraying at our gauge we knew exactly where it was and one or two hundred psi made all the difference in the world yeah because when we first started using these we were using it with a solid color stain which is really really thin and so we knew okay we got to bump the pressure up a little on that 1140 so we bumped it up about 150 200 psi and it worked beautifully i i think there was probably what 70 percent less overspray than we yeah. normally have which yeah. way beats out that 55 percent number yep at least 70 and uh it, you know but then when we started using a latex paint where it's a lot thicker we would get a little frustrated because that 1 to 200 psi wasn't cutting it and we were running 150 feet of hose well, like we found out here with 100 feet you've got to bump that up to 1500 psi in order to achieve the thousand psi at the gun yeah so there you have it the titan hea system the airless system high efficiency airless to help you control overspray at least 55 percent if you got any questions about this system about the tips if you've used it just leave them in the comments below we try to answer all of our com questions and comments we get so we'd love to hear what you have to say about it if you've enjoyed this video please consider giving us a thumbs up please consider liking the video and we do have a website theidahopainter.com and we're also on social media, aren't we, John? We're always on social media, What's, all the time. What social media do we like? We love Facebook, we love Instagram. We're always on those two. You can find us on Pinterest and Twitter here and there, but definitely Facebook and Instagram. We love showing uh, photos and sharing your photos of what you guys are doing out there. Yep, tag us, um, Ida, or tag us, <laughs> Instagram. Idaho Painter, Facebook is The Idaho Painter. Once again, we'll see you on our next video. Out.